Captain Falcon. These are Captain Falcon's nipples. Captain Falcon's nipples have special properties. In fact, they're the most special nipples in the entire game. Let me explain. As some of you might know, Falcon's down aerial is a meteor smash. In Melee, a meteor smash is any move that sends at an angle between 260 and 280 degrees. Meteor smashes are often confused with spikes, but the two have a very important distinction. While both meteor smashes and spikes send opponents downward, spikes, like Falco's down air for example, send at an angle outside of the meteor smash range, and thus can't be meteor cancelled. Meteor cancelling is a strange, intentional mechanic that allows the knockback of meteor smashes to be completely negated by either jumping or using an up B. Take a look up here again. This uppermost hitbox of Captain Falcon's stomp, the nipples area, was given a knockback angle just outside of the meteor smash range, making Falcon stomp the only move in the entire game that shares both a spike hitbox and meteor smash hitboxes. This property of Falcon's down aerial is so odd and obscure that it wasn't even documented online until five years after the game was released, which was also when it was given its unofficial name, the nipple spike. But why'd it take half a decade to discover? Well, not only is the nipple spike hard enough to hit knowing his nipples have different properties, Imagine how hard it'd be to accidentally hit it and actually notice the small difference in angle. Oh my God. Most people who saw the nipple spike probably just thought the person getting hit failed their meteor cancel as well. Even today the nipple spike remains a pretty rare sight. Not because Falcon players don't know about it, but because why go for a difficult to land spike when you can much more easily kill your opponent with a badass knee. Here's another strange thing with Falcon. If you turn the music all the way down, put your ears very close to your speakers, and choose Captain Falcon on the character select screen, you can very, very faintly hear one of Falcon's voice clips play. Here's the sound you're listening for. See if you can hear it. Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon. Weird, huh? This sound effect was probably left in by mistake from when Melee's character select screen more closely resembled Smash 64's, where a special animation and sound effect would play every time you picked a character. Using the sound test in the game's debug mode, you can see that every character had sounds that played when you selected them, but only Falcon's remains audible. Hidden deep within Melee's game files, you can find the unused animations selected and selected wait for everyone on the roster. Like Smash 64, these animations were meant to play when you selected a character. Most of the characters that were in Smash 64 have their selected and selected wait animations ripped straight from that game, and many of the newcomer's animations are clearly unfinished. Which shows they likely scrapped this idea pretty early in development. In a video from Itaru, you can see these animations restored in a way they might have looked on the character select screen had this idea not been scrapped, and some of them even look… sort of okay. Speaking of the character select screen, did you know that Captain Falcon has gameplay changes based on which costume you select? Seriously. For some reason, Falcon's environmental collision box, a little diamond that keeps you from falling through the stage and walking through walls, varies slightly in width based on which color Falcon is. Green has the widest ECB, while Falcon's neutral costume has the thinnest. How slight are we talking here? Well, about this slight. However, the difference is enough so that weird stuff like this can happen. In his default skin, Falcon will fall off of this platform if he does a down smash while facing right. But with his green skin, you can spam down on the C-stick and do this. Supposedly, the different skins also slightly affect the range of his Raptor Boost and Falcon Punch, but I couldn't see any differences in my testing. In theory, a wider ECB should make it slightly easier to do things like Tech from Ledge, but in reality, the difference is so slight it probably rarely, if ever, matters. If you want to be a nerd about it though, then yeah, green is objectively the best Falcon skin. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> oh right. You want to hear about some oddities from those high tiers, don't you? I mean, I guess it's only fitting that Melee's most iconic move has jank, so here it is. The Shine Mine. Using either Fox or Falco, if you jump out of Shine while a reflectable projectile is active, then drop through a platform with another Shine, Shine's projectile reflecting hitbox will appear not where you currently are, but where you first shined. You can set a new location for your Shine Mine by shining somewhere else or even quickly shielding while a projectile is active, and it even persists through death. Now it's important to note that Shine's reflecting hitbox is not the same as its attack hitbox, so no insane across the stage Shine Spikes or anything like that. In addition, the Shine Mine only lasts for two frames before the game corrects its hitbox position and its return to its proper place. In any case, it does allow Fox and Falco players to reflect projectiles from almost wherever they want. However, due to its small hitbox and the aforementioned two active frames, the Shine Mine is pretty difficult to use practically. Here's the only time I've seen the Shine Mine be used in tournament. What? I don't know what just happened. Maybe I missed something. Here, Aklo sets up the Shine Mine with this shine. Then, when Samus is inside of the Shine Mine's remote hitbox, he activates it by dropping through this platform with another shine. You know, stuff like this just makes me think, wow, this game is fucking awful. But also, damn, that's cool. <laughs>